Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning live stream. This is Pastor Steve McKinney of Gateway Mission Assembly in Metro Manila, Philippines, a vibrant and amazing church family. Uh, I'm excited about the Word of God today. My sermon title is Little Strength, No Problem. What that means is that even if all you have is a little bit of strength, that is not a problem for you. It is not a problem for the Lord. Uh, just keep on keeping on, keep on being faithful, and God will use Use you in an amazing way. I'm going to go in depth into this, but before we do, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We are amazed by your love. We are amazed in your presence. You are so awesome, and we are so grateful to, to spend time with you and to serve you. And Lord, I just pray that we will best use this time in your word and in your presence. And I pray that we would be your true disciples. Uh, Lord, we won't just hear the word, but we will do what it says. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen, amen, praise the Lord. I want you guys to go ahead and turn with me right now to the book of Revelation chapter three. And uh, this is a section of the book of Revelation where uh, the Spirit of God is writing through the Apostle John uh, to seven churches. And we're going to specifically go to the message to the church in Philadelphia uh, right now, which is Revelation chapter 3, starting at verse 7. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. And I want to stop right there. Uh, that is such an interesting statement right there uh, that uh, is written down by the Apostle John. Uh, write this letter to who? To the church in Philadelphia? No, that's not what he says. He does eventually say that at the end. But he says, write this letter to the angel at the church in Philadelphia, or the angel that is working with the church in Philadelphia. Uh, this is such an interesting statement because it just brings to light the fact, guys, uh, that on our assignments from the Lord, on our missions from the Lord, we have angelic help. And God is presenting this message not only to the church in Philadelphia, but he's also making sure that the angel understands uh, what's going on with the church in Philadelphia. And so I, I think it's so interesting that, you know, when God speaks to me about something that's going on in my life, he's also letting the angel uh, that, that works with me or the angels that work with me, he's letting them hear it uh, so that we can all be on the same team. And God is the one coordinating this. We are not the ones coordinating it, but but it's an awesome, awesome thought. So I want you to understand there are angels that encamp around you. The Bible says that the angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear him and he delivers them. And there are angels assigned to our lives and they are very interested in what is going on. So write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true, the one who has the key of David. What he opens, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, guys, which really shows us that whatever God wants to accomplish, God will accomplish. And whatever God wants to do in your life, he's going to do it in your life. And, and the world and the enemy may try to close doors on you, but if God has opened the door, then that door is open for you. And if God has shut a door, nothing's going to open that door. Uh, you know, God is the God of the open and the shut doors. That is so awesome. Now, here's our main verse for today. Verse eight. I know all the things you do, and I have opened a door for you that no one can close. Get this, okay? I know all of the things that you do, okay? God is aware of everything that you do, you know, generically, you know, for him or, or otherwise, but he's speaking about all of the things that we do for him. And he goes on and he says this in, in the second part of verse eight, you have little strength. You have little strength. Now, other versions say you have little power. Okay, so, you know, obviously strength uh, would would give us a hint that it has to do with like human strength, whereas power would imply spiritual power. And I believe that really both apply. Uh, he's saying you have little 
human strength and you have little spiritual power. You have little, okay? You have little to work with, but yet you have obeyed my word and did not deny me. What is God saying here? He's saying, I am so proud of you. I know what you do, and I know that you don't have a whole lot to work with. I know that you that, that you have little strength, little power, but you have been faithful. You've been faithful with the little that has been given to you, and you have not denied my name. You have obeyed my word. Now, I'm going to come back to verse 8 in just a moment, but I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, this, this portion of the letter to the church in Philadelphia. And uh, verse 9 says this, Look! I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews, but they are not. I will force them to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones that I love. This is a scripture that has been misunderstood and misrepresented in the Bible really a lot, especially in these last days, and it seems to be accelerating. I want you guys to understand, okay, uh, God does not care about your bloodline, like your physical bloodline. He doesn't care. Uh, it doesn't matter if you were born a Jew or you were born a, a German or you were born a Greek or you were born a Filipino or you were born a Malaysian. None of that matters to God. Can I get a good amen on that? And there's a lot of people these days that are saying, oh, you know, the Jews that are in Israel, they're not the real Jews. They're actually European descent. Uh, you know, that's that's the synagogue of Satan. Those are the fake Jews. And guys, I, I want you to understand, it doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter what the bloodline is. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, if, if the tribes of Israel are represented in Israel right now. The Bible says we're supposed to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we're supposed to honor God's chosen people. But the Bible also says this, guys. I want to bring you to another scripture while we're here. Romans chapter 2 verses 28 to 29. It says this, for you are not a true Jew just because you were born of Jewish parents or because you have gone through the ceremony of circumcision. No, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law. Rather, it is a change of heart produced by the Spirit. And a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. Guys, based on this criteria, I want you to know who a true Jew is. I am a true Jew, all right? Now, I want you to know my blood and my name, my, my you know, my, my uh, uh, heritage is Scottish and Irish, okay? The name McKinney is an Irish name. So by blood, I'm Irish, but guess what? In the spirit, I'm a Jew. All right. Why am I a Jew? Because my heart is right with God and, and I've been circumcised in a spiritual way and my heart is being changed by the spirit of God because I'm yielded to him and I belong to him. OK, so I am a true Jew and it doesn't matter what my passport is. OK, so when people make a big deal out of this and they try to use this scripture, uh, you know, to to discredit who's a Jew or who's not a Jew or whatever. Just remember what the word of God teaches us. You are a true Jew, not because of your descent, but you are a true Jew because your heart is right with God and your heart is circumcised and the spirit of God is moving in your life. Can I get a good amen on that? Go ahead and, and touch your heart right now and just say, I am a true Jew. I belong to the family of God. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and move on back into the scripture here. And it says here in verse 10, because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to the world. Can somebody say protection? That is an awesome thing. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. I want to break down this statement for a second. Hold on to what you have 
so that no one will take away your crown. Don't do great things for God just to end up losing those things, okay? All right, the Apostle Paul uh, said he worked out his salvation with fear and trembling, and he didn't want to lead a bunch of other people to the Lord and then get disqualified himself, okay? Don't do... 30 years of great things for God and then do one year at the end where you just totally lose it and, and you backslide. Don't do that. Serve the Lord wholeheartedly, okay? And, and don't lose what you have. Now, it's interesting. You don't have a crown yet. You're going to receive a crown, but you're going to receive the crown if you don't lose what you have, if you don't lose your relationship with God, if you don't lose your salvation. So hold on to what you have so that you will receive that crown on that day. Verse 12, all who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God and they will never have to leave it. You're going to literally be a part of God's eternal temple. And I will write on them the name of my God, and they will be citizens in the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven, from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. These are awesome, awesome things. I could spend a lot of time here, but I'm not going to because I'm going to keep the main point, the main point. Verse 13, the final verse of this scripture. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. So the letter is to the church in Philadelphia. The letter is to all churches. The letter is to us, but it's also to the angels of the churches. Now, guys, does that mean the Gateway Mission Assembly has an angel? Absolutely. I think we have more than one. Now, let's go back to our main verse, which is Revelation chapter 3. I know all the things you do because I've opened a door for you that no one can close, okay? So the opportunity is there. No one can close that door. You have little strength, little power, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny my name. Guys, those are the people that we need to be. We need to be the kind of people that even when we have little strength and little power, it is no problem. We continue to walk faithfully before the Lord, walk in his power and accomplish his will. Guys, I'm going to talk about some of the things that we have little of, but God uses us anyway, and we can still accomplish great things for him and make him proud. Guys, when you have little strength, what does that really mean? Guys, it's it's literal, okay? Uh, I have to tell you, I can relate to this. Little strength. When you come to the end of the day, are you tired? All right. Do you get tired because because you don't have enough strength to accomplish everything that you need to accomplish in the day? Are you the kind of person that you need eight hours of sleep or six hours of sleep or 12 hours of sleep? Uh, can you get by on three hours of sleep? Guys, for much of my life, I was able to get by on three or four hours of sleep. But, you know, these days I'm making sure that I get six. Okay, and, and at least once a week I sleep in and I get eight, okay? Normally that will be, uh, you know, on, on, a, on a Monday morning or something like that, okay? Uh, but you know what? I have little strength. It seems like a lot of my life uh, is figuring out how can I get everything done with the amount of strength that I have? And, and a lot of times if I don't get something done, it's because I ran out of energy. I ran out of strength. All right. But God says, guess what? Even if you have just a little bit of strength, you can still accomplish my purpose because I have opened a door for you that no man can shut. Power, guys. Spiritual power. I, I want you guys to understand the power of God is unlimited. It really, really is. However, sometimes my spiritual power seems to be shy. It seems to be a little bit less than what I need. But if I'll go all the way to empty, I will never run out. And I have to trust that my spiritual power, even though it seems little, it will not run out. God will sustain it. The oil will keep flowing. Energy, guys. 
Uh, sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm about to do something, uh, whether it's, it's, you know, for business or, or for finances or for the family uh, or, or for ministry. And, and I just don't feel like I have the energy. And I, had, I just have to, to stir myself up and I have to speak to my soul. And I have to say, so bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Soul, rise up. Put your faith in the Lord and continue to do the work of the Lord. You know what, guys? It seems like so many things pile up. You know, sometimes I need to do something for somebody because it's their birthday. Sometimes I need to do something for the family uh, because something needs to be done medically. Sometimes I need to do some ministry thing and it's all happening at the same time. And I'm like, oh, Lord, help me. I don't have much energy. I only have a little bit of energy. And the Lord says, my grace grace is sufficient for you. My energy is sufficient for you. Just keep going. Just keep trusting. Your little is enough. You know what? Sometimes I feel like I don't have enough health. As a matter of fact, even right now, some of you guys are wondering, hey, does Pastor Steve sound a little bit nasally? You know what, guys? I tried to find somebody else to preach today uh, because I I am really struggling in my health this week. And, and, and I had two major health issues. And, and, and I prayed and God healed me instantly of one of those health issues. But the cold symptoms, they remained uh, and they're getting better. But I'm, I'm sitting here today in front of you struggling with my health. And I'm saying to you and I'm saying to the Lord and I hear the spirit of the Lord saying to me, even though your health is little right now, it is enough. Even though your health is little right now, continue to trust in me. Preach my word. I will move forward powerfully, even though I sound a little bit funny. Can I get a good amen on that? My time is little. I seem to not have enough time, but God says, use your time wisely and there will be enough time. Trust me, I'm the redeemer of time. Here's some other things that are little in my life and I believe uh, seem little in in a lot of other people's lives. You know what, guys? I feel like like my talent is little. I feel like my creativity is little. I'm not the most creative person out there. I'm not the most talented person out there. As a matter of fact, I, I asked the Lord, why did you choose me? And and by the way, since you did choose me, could you give me a little more creativity, Lord? Would Could you give me a little more talent? Uh, because I do feel like I'm lacking in those things. But you know what? Even if God did not add one more ounce of creativity to my life, even if God did not add one more, one more level of talent to my life, I'm going to keep on being faithful and I'm going to keep on using what I have. And here's the big, the big memo. You should do whatever talent you have, whatever creativity you have, do those things for the Lord. Use those things for the Lord. Guys, opportunity. Sometimes we don't have a lot of opportunity around us, but guess what? Even though it doesn't doesn't seem like there's a lot of opportunity or maybe you're comparing yourself to somebody else and you feel like, wow, they have big opportunity, but I just have tiny opportunity. The word of God says, I have opened a door for you that no man can shut. Opportunity is there. Be faithful with the little opportunities that you have and God will bless you for it. Here's another one, experience. Sometimes I feel like my experience is not enough. My resume is not enough. What I've done in this life uh, doesn't seem to prepare me for the things that I still want to do in this life and for the Lord. But God says, I'm the God that even though you have a little bit of experience, I can propel you into bigger and greater things for my glory. Guys, what about this? Credibility. Here's another one. Reputation. Here's another one. Trust. Guys, you know what? We are all sinners. We have all had things happen in our lives. We we all have baggage and there will always be somebody who considers you a hypocrite based on things that have happened in your past. But I want you to understand that God is the God that says you don't need a perfect reputation. You don't need perfect credibility. You don't need everyone to trust you because I trust you because you're putting your trust in me. Just keep moving forward and I will 
will keep that door open. I will pave a way and you will be useful to me. Can I get a good amen on that? Here's another one, guys. Vision. Very often I feel like I don't have the vision to succeed. Very often I feel like I don't, uh, you know, understand the big picture. But God says, trust me and just go one step at a time. Keep going one foot forward, one foot in front of the other. And, and I will give you the vision, even if it is layer by layer, day by day, one step at a time. I will give you vision. Here's another one, guys. Desire. Sometimes I lack motivation. Sometimes I lack desire. You know, I know I know that that's a big problem for some other people as well. And sometimes I have to ask the Lord, oh, God, give me a desire. Give me a want. Uh, give me that longing to do something great for you. Oh, God, I'm not feeling it right now, but I do sense a response ability to do more for your kingdom and to care for your sheep. Because Jesus said to Peter, he said, if you really love me, care for my sheep. If you really love me, feed my sheep. If you really love me, feed my lambs. There is a responsibility for us to move forward even when our desire is, is lacking or waning. Here's another one, guys. Confidence. Sometimes I don't have the confidence. I know I know that some of you also feel like you don't have the confidence, but I want you to understand God is the God that says when you are weak, you are strong. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And I want you to understand, even though you lack courage, even though you lack boldness, even though you lack confidence, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Don't wait for your confidence to be there. You know, guys, uh, many years ago, I was I was uh, sitting across the table from somebody and, and, and he was telling me that he was going to do great things for God and and he was going to go to Bible school and everything. Uh, and, and, and he said, but you know, I've got to fix this first. And he pointed to his mouth, you know, and, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not tracking you. He said, you didn't notice? I'm like, um, notice what? <laughs> he said, I have bad teeth, you know, and, and he showed me, he smiled for me and showed me his teeth. And honestly, they didn't look that bad to me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, he said, he said, I can't hardly smile. Uh, I can't hardly communicate and I can't preach. I can't even lead a Bible study uh, because I don't have the confidence because my teeth are bad, you know. And and so he was planning on on literally uh, selling his house, you know, and using some of that money to go to Bible school, but also taking a big chunk of that money to buy new teeth. And I'm talking about, guys, uh, he was going to be spending well over $20,000 cosmetically uh, on his teeth. That's over a million pesos. Okay. And this is many years ago. And I said, brother, I said, don't, don't let, you know, lack of confidence hinder you. I, I said, you know, this, this, this process that you're talking about, it's going to take some time because, you know, it's many, many surgeries and things like that. I said, I said, go ahead and lead those Bible studies. Go ahead and lead prayer. Go ahead and smile at people because God has made you just the way that you are. And God wants to use you not only down the road uh, after you get your new teeth, but he wants to use you now with the teeth that you have. Can I get a good amen on that? All right. I know some of you are like scratching your head, but that was such an, an amazing thing to me to understand that there was somebody that was literally not allowing God to flow through them because they were ashamed uh, that their teeth weren't that great. You know, and, and I want you to understand whatever little you have, move forward anyway. Be confident in the Lord anyway, and God will do the rest. All right, guys. Uh, here's another one. Sometimes we feel like we have little money and we think, oh, unless I have more money, I can't do anything for God. Can I just can I just explain something to you. God doesn't need your money. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. What he needs is your motivation, your desire. He needs your commitment. Okay. He needs you to walk in vision. He needs you to trust him. And if you will move forward with the little that you have, 
He will supply. Can I get a good amen on that? Guys, here's another one. Some people feel like, oh, I only have a little anointing. And I want you guys to understand, every believer has an anointing. God says you have an anointing from the Holy One. All right. But it is true that some people seem to have a massive anointing and other people have more of a normal anointing. And some people seem to be walking in a lesser anointing, uh, which is God's plan because we're all supposed to work together, okay? And you're supposed to use what you have for the glory of God. But I want you to understand, don't allow what your perceived little anointing is, don't allow that to stop you or to hinder you. Use the anointing that God has given you. It will be powerful. It will be fruitful. Move forward. Don't ever use a little anointing as an excuse to not do great things for God. Here's another one, the spiritual gifts. Oh, I don't have very many spiritual gifts. You know what? Even if you only have one spiritual gift, even if you don't know what your spiritual gift is, move forward in doing things for God. Ask him for more gifts and he will distribute those gifts to you. Do Use the little that you have, even in the way of gifts, and God will grow you. Guys, here's another one. A lot of people think, well, I don't have any speaking ability. Guys, you know what? Not everybody is is Mr. or Mrs. Smooth in the Department of Communication, but everybody can communicate, okay? Open your mouth. Speak what God is telling you to speak. Uh, God's Spirit will fill your mouth and will flow through you. God will use you. Don't allow what you feel to be a limited speaking ability to hinder you from communicating for God because he says you are Christ's ambassador ambassador and ambassadors speak. So speak for God. Here's another one. A lot of people feel like they don't have enough magnetism. They they don't have enough uh, charisma. Uh, You know what, guys? God made you the way that you are. So be who you are and, and just be the best version of yourself. And, and when you communicate and when you talk and when you do things for God, use as much energy as you have. Use as much of your personality as you can. God will use you. Your little is no problem. Your little is enough. A lot of people feel like they're not cute enough, okay? A lot of people think I have just a little bit of cuteness or I have no cuteness at all. You know what, guys? You're cute to somebody, okay? All right. Not not everybody is is as handsome and not everybody is as beautiful as, as a lot of you guys are. But don't let that hinder you. Come on. You know, just be the best version of you. You are you are created in the image of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you the way that you are. And so smile and be confident and move out and do great things for God and just be the best version of you. Amen. And by the way, you're a lot cuter than you think you are. Here's my final two for this day. All right, guys, here's something that I have a very little bit of, and I know a lot of you suffer from the same thing, all right? Uh, And it's something that is a fruit of the Spirit, but I, I lack patience. All right. I really do. I get impatient sometimes Uh, and and I have to exercise that fruit. I have to exercise, uh, you know, the patience that God has given me. But if I will just choose to be patient and if I will just allow the Holy Spirit to build patience in me. All right, that fruit of the Spirit, the little will be enough. Yes, sometimes I have the patience of a mustard seed, okay? But just like faith, if you have faith like a mustard seed, it will move mountains. And even if you have a little bit of patience, if you put it into practice, if you exercise it, then you will be an overcomer and you will be victorious. Here's another one, and this is probably the biggest one on the list. Sometimes I feel like I have just a little bit of love, all right? 
right? Sometimes I feel like my love is lacking. Sometimes I just feel like, oh man, humans, <laughs> right? Uh, because most people are kind of difficult to deal with. And sometimes when we're tired, sometimes when we have just a little bit of strength, sometimes when we have just a little bit of power, it can be overwhelming. But I want you to understand if you will love and if you will love God, his love will be made complete in you. If you will allow the love of God to flow through you, even though yours is little, his is big and his big with your little will be enough to love other people and to love him and to change the world for him. So guys, uh, let's go back to our scripture one more time with all these things that I've talked about in mind. All right, Revelation chapter three, verse eight. I know all the things you do, even though you have little, even though you have little, I have opened a door for you that no one can close. That door is open, even though you have little. And he says, you have little strength. You have little power. Wow. Whatever your little is, it is enough. It is enough. The disciples said, all that there are is just a little bit of bread and just a little bit of fish. But Jesus said, it's enough. And he blessed the little and he fed a multitude with the little. And if you will be faithful, if you will give the little that you have to the Lord, God will bless it and God will bless you and he will use you. But just make sure that you obey his word and that you don't deny his name, and he will be proud of you. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this inspiration. And Lord, I just pray right now that your Holy Spirit would move in a mighty way into every single ear, every single heart, every single life, Lord, that the understanding would, would gravitate towards this word, Lord. I pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that everyone within the sound of my voice here today would be inspired and would know and would have a revelation that their little is enough. Their little is no problem. And Lord, I pray that we would all be committed from this moment on to giving our all with the little that we have. Now, Father, I pray healing into my body, and I pray healing into every other body represented uh, within the sound of my voice here right now. In Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, be energized. In Jesus' name, be strengthened. And Father, I pray for all of us that, that struggle with finances. I, I speak blessings, financial blessings into every household, including the house, which is Gateway Mission Assembly. I speak blessing. I speak promotion. Uh, Lord, I speak good careers, good opportunities. You have opened a door that no man can shut. I bless you and I bless your children. And Lord, I also pray for all of the relationships. I pray for the marriages. I pray, I pray for the, the family relationships, Lord, uh, the business partnerships, Lord, the, the, the co-worker relationships. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, let your spirit let your oil flow between people, Lord. Let there be a spirit of forgiveness and a reconciliation spirit, Lord, flowing in all of us. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I pray that we would be useful to you. I pray, Lord, that we would be those who are on fire for you. I pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you will take the mustard seeds. You will take the little, you will take the loaves and the fish. Lord, you will take uh, the, the, the talent uh, that, that you have given to us and you will, will help us to multiply that talent, Lord, so that we will hear your words saying, you, you are good and you are a faithful servant. Well done. Now, Lord, I place a hedge of protection on all of us 
And I pray, Lord, that we would have an amazing rest of this Sunday and that we would continue to abide in your presence and worship you and that we would have a spirit of prayer on us as we continue to worship you in everything that we do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you so much. Please don't forget to pray for me and I'm praying for you. Amen.